God bless you, God bless you, God bless you with every blessing in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. The Lord is good on today. Thank you so much for joining me. Go ahead and uh, like this video so that it can be pushed out to uh, the rest of the internet <laughs> so that the algorithm can pick it up. If you can hear me okay, go ahead and put a one in the chat. That also is a way for you to check in so that I know that you are here. And I'll call your name out at the end of our time together today in prayer. If you have any specific prayer requests, go ahead and put that into the uh, chat. And I will, um, if it's a prayer request for healing, we'll execute the believer's authority. We'll exercise the believer's authority. We will use the power and authority that Jesus gave his followers who believe on your behalf. Uh, if it's another type of prayer request, we will agree in prayer together uh, for that. All right. Um, and of course, uh, I would be remiss uh, on today if I did not mention uh, the great and uh, just a giant of the faith, a, a great man of God, Dr. Jerry Savelle has gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, if you have not listened to his teachings on the favor of God, if you have not um, heard his teaching on how Satan can't uh, keep your goods uh, if you don't let him steal your joy, Woo, if you haven't watched that teaching, you need to watch that teaching. Um, and of course, um, he was one of the first people that I heard talk about voluminous Bible reading, like, you know, hours upon hours upon hours a day. And of course, God prospered him tremendously. Ooh -wee. My, my, my. Gwendolyn, how are you? Thank you for joining us. We will execute the believer's authority on your behalf at the end of our time together. Um, I also got the communication that you sent me. Uh, thank you so much. You are very, very appreciated. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hello to everybody on YouTube. Hello to everybody over there on Instagram. Uh, hello to everybody on Rumble. Hello to everybody on uh, Facebook and on Twitter. They call that X these days. God bless you. God bless you with every blessing in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Let's go ahead and get started with our teaching today. Uh, now, the believer's authority is in the New Testament in general. There are also some scriptures uh, concerning the believer's authority in the Old Testament, uh, but primarily in the New Testament in general. Then in the Gospels in particular, and then in Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 10 specifically. So we have already uh, looked at some of the outstanding scriptures inside of Luke chapter 9. Uh, today we will be looking at just a few of the outstanding scriptures in Luke chapter 10. Let's go ahead and share the screen. Come on, screen. There we go. There we go. Now, one thing I want to point out here is uh, that people say, oh, yeah, but that was only the disciples that were given the believer's authority. And of course, you know, my, my answer to that is, are you not a disciple of God? Are you not a disciple of Jesus Christ? Uh, so, you, yes, you are. Yes, you are. But there, then here we have the 70. Ooh, so it was 70 others also. So others means plus 70. So that means 82. And of course, as you know, um, in the Great Commission, that is extended to all of us. 
And we have right there in Luke chapter 9 how people who were not even disciples of Jesus were able to do exploits in Jesus' name. Ooh. So just because somebody uh, performs a miracle, all right, all right, just because somebody, you still need to ask God about that specific person. All right, and about what that person is teaching, because they may actually work for God, but they just may have a bad understanding or an incorrect or inaccurate understanding of a specific topic. All right, so we need to go to God in every situation about the individual and about what the individual is saying, because sometimes a person could be saying 100% uh, truth, 100% accuracy. And at other times, they may be at round about 65%. So you need to check with God, uh, and most importantly, with his word. Where is it in the scripture? My, 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 my. And then, also what I'm seeing a lot of these days is people are, are quoting a scripture, but they are not telling you the context of the scripture before it or after it. Okay? So um, we want to read... The Bible. Hallelujah. You got to know the word for yourself. Now remember, oh my, when Jesus was tempted by the devil, the devil quotes scripture to Jesus is Lord on today. Did you hear me? I said the devil quotes scripture too. So you have to know the Bible better than Satan does because Satan is going to try to deceive you. Oh, my, 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 any way he can. All right, Patricia, how are you? God bless you. We, I see that uh, request there, and we will execute the believer's authority towards the end of this hour uh, of our time together. All right, all right, hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Now, let's go to the, the word. This is, uh, again, this is Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have been appointed. All right. Let's continue on. Ruth, how are you? God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Now, what have you been appointed to do? Luke chapter 10, verse 9. And heal the sick there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And I encourage you to read this entire chapter uh, on your own. And read it over and over and over until you believe it. My, my, my. We've got many people who call upon the name of the Lord, who call themselves Christians, but they don't believe the Bible. Uh, you have been appointed to do what? Heal the sick. You. All right? People get upset. They get angry. When you say that you are going to go heal someone, in the name of Jesus, or that such and such person got healed, or they got delivered, or you tell them what has worked in the past. They always want to put it off on God. Well, if it is his will, if it's not his will. No, no, no. What does it say right here? Can we read, people? And heal the sick there. I had someone say, well, the Bible never told you to heal the sick. That's someone who hasn't read the Bible. All right, so I know that I cannot heal anybody. I'm not the healer. I always give the praise and glory to Jesus. Over 100 people have been healed uh, in this, uh, through this ministry's biblical teaching. Not because of me, not because of the ministry, but because of the biblical teaching. Uh, most of those people have been healed by repetitively reading healing scriptures and by eating, changing to a biblical-based diet. That's in chapter 1, verse 29, all right? What we're talking about now, the believer's authority, is uh, binding, rebuking, and telling the demons and the disease to leave and receiving immediately the healing virtue, the abundant life of Jesus Christ. 
all right? And people have been healed this way as well, right on live streams. And again, it's not me, but I have to allow myself to be used by God. Um, I, uh, in my business, I have helped several people get $100,000 jobs. And when I tell people that, they get upset. Oh, it was God that gave them the job. Well, you think so? Uh, I obviously don't have him. But God used somebody. All right? People want to think that things are going to happen without any human intervention. They're just, just going to happen. Okay? Now, yes, there's been times where large amounts of money showed up in my bank account. But typically, someone either gave me the money or I did business with someone. In the same way, yes, there are times when a person is miraculously healed, especially when you're talking about uh, babies in a biological sense, little tiny kids, uh, or spiritual babies, people who just got saved. They don't know where scripture is or, or, and how to find out what it is. Okay, They can't tell you uh, two healing scriptures. All right, but there comes a point of maturity where there is a there is personal responsibility that is required. Now, this scripture is so important because what does it say? Uh, we are supposed to announce the kingdom of God has come near to you. So people get um, afraid. They they have fear. They think things are not possible. Uh, this is a two. Oh, look at uh, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn already was there. Glory be to God. Let's go ahead and say it. With Jesus, all things are possible. Glory be to God. She's already uh, going where I was headed. Ladies and gentlemen, we announced that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Why do we announce that? Because, yes, scientifically speaking, it may be impossible. Yes, the doctors may have told you that there's nothing that can be done. Yes, uh, all of these facts may be the case. Those are reality. We don't deny reality. We change reality by focusing on God's word. But because the kingdom of God is here, now the impossible is possible. I love it when they tell me it's impossible. I love it when they tell me it can't be done. Because if it cannot be done by humans, that, that means that it can only be done by God. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I want to let someone out there know. Do not be discouraged. Do not be worried when the doctor tells you there's nothing they can do for you. That's the best thing in the world for the doctor to tell you I can't do nothing for you. Because when the doctor tells you that, you have no choice, no other option, no other avenue but to turn to Jesus. Turn to his word. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And I'm not against doctors. All right. I'm not against uh, medication. I believe you should ask God about all your treatment, whether to do a certain treatment or not to do a certain treatment. But you need to go to the doctor. You need to let them tell you what's wrong so you can bind that thing, rebuke it, so you can do your own research, so that you can receive the Zoe abundant life of Jesus Christ, so that you can start eating the foods that have been traditionally used to fight that specific condition. I'm not against doctors. But what I'm, I want you to know is that the doctor doesn't have the last word. Ooh, what's the last word? The last word is Psalm chapter 118, verse 17. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. That's the last word. Ooh, my, my, my. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Thank you. So as we declare that the kingdom of God has come near. Now we are in a different environment. Now what was impossible is what? Now possible. All right, let me uh, make this illustration. Uh, different countries in the natural realm, they have embassies in different places. And wherever that embassy is, the laws of the home country is what is in effect. So for instance, if I were in 
uh, let's just say I was in Zimbabwe, but I went to the U.S. Embassy. Now, when I step into the U.S. Embassy, the laws of Zimbabwe no longer are in effect. It's the laws of the United States, even though I am physically, what? In Zimbabwe. Now, uh, there is what's called an ambassador, okay? And wherever the ambassador goes, whether or not he is in the United States, uh, the home country where, um, where I live right now, or let's say he's in Zimbabwe, even if that ambassador is in what Zimbabwe, he has what? Diplomatic immunity. So whatever he says, as long as it's according to the law, that's what happens for him at that time. Ladies and gentlemen, you are an ambassador of Christ, and when you declare the kingdom of God has come near, whatever was so-called impossible, not logical, not reasonable, um, unscientific, whatever words you want to use, it is now a subject to the laws of the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Woo-wee! Thank you, Jesus. Let's move on. Luke chapter 17, excuse me, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. Then the seven to joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nevertheless do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven my 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 lord jesus help us Lord Jesus, help us. So again here, the 70, all right, they are getting results. Now, when we say the 70, remember uh, that this uh, power, this authority has been given directly to you right here in 2024. It's all throughout the Bible, but I will point to the Great Commission uh, in Matthew, last uh, chapter of Matthew as well as the Great Commission in Mark, the last chapter in Mark, all right? Now, also, I want you to notice here that they have joy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have joy, I didn't say happiness, I said joy, then some, you need to change what you're doing, something you're not right, okay? Or there's something you should be doing that you're not doing. See, happiness is based on happenings. Joy is based on what Jesus has already done. You can always have joy, right? Because what Jesus has already done is never going to change. Because he's already done. Happenings change all the time. So don't allow your emotions, your feelings, to be manipulated by the environment. No, 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 no. Instead... You are going to have joy and peace in believing. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, my goodness. My, my, my. Should we go there? I think we've got to go there. I didn't plan on it. We're not done with Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20 yet. I was not, I wasn't done. I wasn't planning on going there yet. I wasn't planning on going there at all. But let's go ahead. We're going to go to Romans. I know everybody who follows the biblical teaching of how to be healed TV is reading the Proverbs of the day for the given day of the month. So whatever day it is, you read that and doing the same with Matthew. I know you're doing the same with Romans. I know you're reading Psalm 91 upon waking before you listen, before you go to bed. I just know it. I know it. Now may the God of hope fill you with all, all joy peace in believing that you may abound in hope 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, do not allow bad times, bad situations, uh, people who are confused and you need to pray for them, bad happenings to affect your emotions and your feelings. Because you have a belief, because you're in faith, then your emotions, what the, what emotions do? We call that uh, the, um, the fruit of the spirit. You're going to have hope and joy and peace. All right. Um, and uh, let's see. I'm not sure if, the, if hope is in the fruit of the spirit. Uh, but what I'm saying is as you um, demonstrate the fruit of the spirit. All right. Through faith, you're going to have what? Hope and joy and peace. If you don't have hope, if you don't have joy, and if you don't have peace, what? You're not believing. Oh, my, 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 my. So this is why it's so important to read your scripture. Because you have to know what the scripture says. If you know what the scripture says, nothing can take away your what? Hope. Your joy and your peace. I don't care if the doctor say you got 55 variants. If you know the scripture and you read the scripture and the scripture is in you, then you will have what? Hope, joy, and peace. My, 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 my. Lord have mercy. Now, that's extra, ladies and gentlemen. That's extra. I, I wasn't planning on that. Uh, now, let's get back to what I was planning on. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. They, the 70 had joy. Why? But demons are subject to us in your name. So when we are talking about a behavior, a sickness, a disease, anything, there is a, a spiritual reason for this happening. And there is a natural reason for this happening. All right. Uh, many people, they refuse to natural reason for the disease of the sickness okay many people they love to eat all the meat they can eat they love to eat all the fast food junk food all of the uh soul food processed food they, they, they don't want to change that they don't want to eat the fruits the vegetables the berries the beans uh the sweet potatoes regular potatoes the rice the corn they don't want to eat that okay um so they don't want to deal with that natural part, but we can bind and rebuke the spirit of gluttony. We can bind and rebuke the spirit of infirmity. We can uh, tell Satan to take his hands off of them in the name of Jesus. We can receive the Zoe abundant life of Jesus Christ into their body and mind. We can receive the virtue of Jesus Christ into whatever specifically is wrong, where there might be an organ or a condition or whatever it is. So we can deal with the demonic force that's making them uh, do the physical things that they should not be doing. All right. At verse 18. I mean, you need to memorize this verse. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And he said, I saw Satan lightning from heaven. Whenever, anytime anybody brings up Satan, Okay, anytime that uh, you see a scary movie, you shouldn't be watching scary movies, but I'm talking about if it's a commercial or something like that, you should see Satan falling from heaven like lightning. In other words, he's a has-been. He's a nobody. He's a good for nothing. All right? Now, you need to understand that in the name of Jesus, you have authority over him. You also need to understand that he's working 24 hours a day to do what? Steal from you, to kill you, and destroy you. All right? So you do have to oppose him. But with the name of Jesus, you can whip him just like Jesus whipped him. Remember the scripture says, put on Christ daily. All right? So you, you need to see yourself putting on Christ like you would put on a coat, I put on Jesus Christ. All right, there was a um, a secular song. I'm not encouraging you to listen to it, but the the song said something to the effect, "I I put on for my city." So we don't put on for a city; we put on for Jesus. Ooh, 
really, I'm going through life as a representation, what, of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Verse 19, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So, this is not telling you to go and walk on serpents, literal serpents. And, or, however, we do know that Paul was bitten by a snake and, and he survived. Now, Paul wasn't playing with snakes. A snake attacked him. Okay, now, if you were attacked by a snake, you need to go to the doctor. And you go to the doctor quoting stripes I'm healed over and over. You go to the doctor saying, I. I eat the flesh of Jesus Christ by faith. I drink the blood of Jesus Christ by faith. By faith, I drink the refreshing waters of Jesus Christ. By faith, I eat the manna of heaven. All right? Woo-wee! Those uh, come from uh, John chapter 6 and John chapter 4. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, you have authority over serpentine spirits, that evil spirit of Python, which comes to deceive you, to, um, to speak to you and imitate the voice of God, that evil spirit that tries to block your finances, wrap up your money so that you can't get to it, that evil spirit that uh, attacks specific organs in the body you have a praise Jesus for uh, minister Katie Souza S O U Z A she has a amazing team prayers against the spirit of python all right you have authority in the name of Jesus over all scorpion like demons those type of demons that want to claw at you that want to sting and shock. No, no, no. I have authority over them in Jesus' name and over all the power, other kind of power the enemy got. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So this is a great... Ooh, excuse me. By stripes, I'm healed. Uh, I belch. By stripes, I'm healed. By stripes, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. Perfect digestion. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So if you're ever feeling any pain in the body, you can say, according to Luke chapter 10, verse 20, this pain is illegal. This problem is illegal. You must leave my body. Pain, cease your operation. Stop your maneuvers against me. I command the peace of God upon my body. In Jesus' mighty name. Verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. In other words, this, that's just, you know, that's run of the mill. That, that, that's, that's to be expected. It's to be expected at the name of Jesus, every demon run out. Every demon behind poverty. Every demon behind uh, physical illness, conditions, symptoms. It, that, that's, that should happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not surprised when God's word works. It calls for further investigation if it appears as though the word isn't working. See, people are not expecting the word to work. I expect it to work. And if it doesn't look like it's working, I'm going to do some investigation. The Bible tells you everything you need to know to be successful in every area. And this is why don't like faith. This is why people don't like faith. The believer's authority. This is why people don't like personal responsibility. And this is why stability. Because they don't want to what? Hold themselves accountable. Jesus has given me everything I need to succeed in every area. To be healthy in every area. To have joy in every area. To have peace in every area. Yes, Satan is the, to blame for everything bad. Everything bad. Satan's to blame. However... Satan is not going to oppose himself. Satan is not going to fight himself in your life. So you have to uh, fight back against Satan. You have to do that with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
So that looks like declaring and decreeing God's word over every situation until it changes. Let's continue. Woo but rather rejoice because your name are written in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, healing belongs to us. I want you to know prosperity belongs to you. I know y'all don't like prosperity. I know, well, not you all, but people in general. I know people don't like it. They get upset, get angry. Angry, get mad. They don't. Oh, they don't do about money. That, but y'all go to work. Not y'all, but people in general go to work all day long, every day. But they don't want to talk about money. Woo-wee. Joy for the journey belongs to us. Uh, mental health belongs to us. Long life is in there. One hundred and twenty minimum. Long life belongs to us. But the most important thing is missing hell. I'm not going to hell for any reason, anything, or anybody. Woo-wee. Lord, let me stop there. Let me stop there on that. Now, uh, this next scripture is not on our curriculum, but as I was preparing for the message today, it came up in my spirit. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And verse 21, now when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. People are always talking about, well, we just never know what God going to do. It may or may not be his will. You just never know if it be God's will. So how do they uh, plan on finding out what God's will is when they say it like that? They plan on doing nothing and sitting around and watching and seeing what happened. But what does Jesus say right here? The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Ladies and gentlemen, the will of God is in his word. The Bible is Jesus' last will and testament. He died upon the cross, which made the will go into effect. He rose again to become the executor of that will. Now, of course, you need to ask God, you know, before you marry somebody. All right. That's not in the Bible, whether or not or who who you should marry, who you shouldn't marry. Before you go into a certain type of business or move to another city, you need to ask God what he wants you to do. But see, that's different from people saying, oh, if it's his will, it's going to automatically happen. When you ask God what you're supposed to do, what you are asking him so that you can do his will. You see that difference? You see that difference? We have to do the will of God. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. So when you arrive at a problem and you declare the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is here because you're there. You're the ambassador. Ooh, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's governmental system of fixing our problems. The United States is... Uh, has a military, has a police force, all right? Well, the kingdom of God has an angelic force, hallelujah. The kingdom of God has an economic system. Uh, Much of this economic system, uh, or some of it, there's a a lot of handouts, welfare, and people get things for nothing, all right? Uh, Safety, if you will. I'm not saying that's good or bad. What I'm saying is that God has a financial system to supply what all your needs according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, the United States has a health care system, uh, one of the sorriest health care systems in the world. All right. Uh, however, uh, God has a health care system, okay, to heal your body. 
uh, and uh, mental health systems, what to heal your mind. He restores what? Your soul. So everything that the natural has available, all right, God has a superior system available, all right, uh, through the kingdom of God. And the wonderful thing about this is, is that the natural system, uh, they tend to fail. Uh, they, they tend to not work. Uh, we've got lots and lots of people in poverty, all right? But if you were to read your prosperity scriptures, if you were to tithe, if you were to offer, if you were to volunteer, then you would get rich, okay? We have a lot of people who are chronically ill, all right, but if you were to eat the foods uh, that God instructed you to eat, as defined in Genesis chapter one verse twenty nine, uh, your health would improve. And then, as you began to read your healing scriptures, as you begin to make declarations, as you begin to meditate on God's word, as you begin to praise and thank Him, then what your health would improve. So there's all of these ways that God has available for you to supersede. What doesn't work in the natural realm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have any questions? We've got two people who have requested that the believer's authority be um, executed, exercised on their behalf. Do we have any questions? I'm going to go to Instagram. God bless you. Uh, chat Mon Kathy, I think uh, that's the correct... Uh, Way to say your name. God bless you for joining us. Uh, let's see here. Any questions? Any questions before we go ahead and exercise the believer's authority? All right. I don't see any questions. If you do have a question, go ahead and put that in the chat. And if you do need prayer, let me know. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Ruth, God bless you. Uh, Sister Maria H. How are you? God bless you. God bless you. Now, uh, let's see here. Gwendolyn, are you still there? I need Gwendolyn to check in. Let me know you're there. And I need Patricia to check in and let me know you are there. Is Gwendolyn there and is Patricia there? Uh, while I'm waiting on them to check in, uh, feel free to do a screen grab. All right, Gwendolyn is there. All right, Gwendolyn, we will go ahead and execute the Believer's Authority on your behalf momentarily. Uh, I am waiting on Patricia. Let's see if Patricia shows up. Uh, and also add Katie Souza, uh, S O U Z A. She's doing an amazing job restoring the knowledge of the believer's authority to the body of Christ today. Praise Jesus. All right. Screen grab that. That's a general outline, a general overview of the things we'll be commanding. And this that's a word for word. Um, example, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I've had, I see that Patricia has also checked in. Thank you. All right. Um, let's scroll up and see, let's see, uh, Gwendolyn says praying for relief of sugar and drop foot. I'm not sure what you mean by relief of sugar. I'm guessing you're saying that your that your blood sugar is too high. Uh, and I'm not sure what drop foot is, but uh, it's got to go in the name of Jesus. Um, just briefly, I, I'm not sure. Um, Gwendolyn, are you talking, uh, are you f fighting uh, high blood sugar? And if so, uh, have you been diagnosed with uh, diabetes type 1? Have you been diagnosed with diabetes type 2? Or have you been diagnosed with pre-diabetes? What have you been diagnosed with? Or can you let us know that, please? Just waiting on an answer there. Let's 
see here. All right, I didn't get an answer there from, oh, diabetes type two, okay. So I wanna share a testimony before we execute the Believer's Authority. Um, diabetes type two is extremely easy to beat based on uh, lots of people's experience. So of course, I have to say I'm not a doctor. This is not uh, medical advice. Ask God what you should do. Uh, that being said, um, uh, several people have come to the uh, mi excuse me to the ministry um, seeking uh, help fighting type two diabetes. Type one uh, can be healed as well. Everything can be healed, but uh, type two is extremely easy. Uh, essentially, what uh, these people have done was minimize their meat, uh, and of course, and some at to some degree eliminated it. Uh, they also stopped eating fast food, junk food, soul food. All right, uh, there are um, lots. Of, number one, fruit goes through the liver; it doesn't go through the pancreas. It's not processed by the pancreas; it's processed by the liver. So fruit is not a problem. Of course, we don't want to be eating anything purified, uh, such as purified sugar. Uh, but fruit itself is fine. Um, and if you don't think that fruit is fine, then all you have to do is look up low glycemic um, foods, uh, low glycemic vegetables, low glycemic uh, fruits. These are fruits, vegetables, edible plants that do not cause blood sugar to increase. Um, also what these people have done, and I'm just, I'm sharing a testimony. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what others have done uh, is to stop eating wheat. All right, wheat bread is processed. All right, it is a hybrid. The plant itself is a hybrid. Then it is refined, meaning they remove all of the vitamins, the nutrients, uh, as well as the um, fiber, uh, right? And then they put bleach on it, okay? So um, it is, we want to avoid processed foods, if at all necessary. And this gentleman, two, two different guys actually, Began to walk every day, all uh, right? Uh, and uh, the one, one of the two gentlemen, he went from an A1C of 12 uh, all the way back to, I believe, an A1C of 5. So uh, 12 is extremely, extremely high, okay? Very bad, all right? Um, and... Uh, Essentially, he was healed. I've got, uh, it's not on a video on YouTube, but I do have that video recorded where he lets us know um, that he was healed, okay? So those are the natural things uh, that, or some natural things uh, that we can do. Uh, also, uh, I like to encourage people to eat an apple every day. It just, it, it really makes a gigantic difference in life. An apple a day. Uh, I do need to do a video about that. An apple a day will help you tremendously. And, of course, um, we want to stay away from coffee, which is a toxin and a poison. All right, let's go. Woo! All right, the kingdom of God has come near to Gwendolyn today. We take the name of Jesus and break the power of Satan over her. Satan, take your hands off of Gwendolyn. We bind and rebuke the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of fear, uh, the spirit of affliction, any spirit of confusion. Uh, the, I'm hearing the spirit of torment. Leave in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, you evil spirit, you take your hand off of the pancreas, off of the kidney, off of the liver. You take your hand off and you go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We cover Gwendolyn, uh, all of her organs, her glands, her tissues, in the blood of Jesus. We cover even, she mentioned drop foot. We cover uh, drop foot in the blood of Jesus right now. And we command her neurological system to work perfectly. We command uh, the 
the electrical pathways in the body to work perfectly. In Jesus' mighty name, we receive the Zoe abundant life of Jesus Christ into her body and into her mind, into her spinal cord, into uh, the electrical pathways, and we receive the virtue of Jesus Christ specifically into the pancreas and specifically into that neurological system. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying. We command her body to line up to the perfect creation of God the Father in the Garden of Eden. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We command the blood um, circulatory system to work perfectly. We command every cell in her body to be clear and free from all fat, from all inflammation, so that the insulin can enter into the cell. In the name of Jesus, we command uh, her pancreas to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We command the, uh, the myelin sheaths that surround the cells, that surround the electrical pathways to be repaired and restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say that she is healed, cleansed, made whole, set free, and delivered by the stripes on Jesus' back according to 1 Peter 2 and 24 in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. All right, uh, Gwendolyn, I want you to stand up, and I want you to walk, and I want you to tell that foot what to do, and we want that. Uh, we want to hear the report. We're waiting on the report. What improvement has been made? What improvement has been made? Are you there, Gwendolyn? Are you there? Are you there? Okay. So we uh, so are you walking better? You walking the same? Where uh, what's going on? All right, she says I'm walking but keeping my eye on my foot. Okay, you say yes, sir, but I need you to be more specific. <laughs> Do we have any improvement? Is it the same or is it worse? <laughs> what do we got? Uh, please be more specific. My foot will go anywhere. Is that good or is that bad? So I don't know what's going on. I need to know, uh, do, have we had improvement? Is it the same or is it worse? She says, my foot will go anywhere. I don't know if that's good or bad. Okay, it's the same. All right, she says, it is the same. So you're saying that it's not obeying what you want. It's doing what it wants to do. Is that what you're telling me? She said, no, that's bad. Okay, so the, the foot is not doing what your mind is telling it to. Is that correct? Okay, she said, yes, it's not doing what she tells it to do. Okay, so what, at this point, what I would encourage you to do is, as you continue to walk, I need you, you have to continue to command your foot to listen to you. So in other, what that sounds like is this. Um, foot, you walk where I tell you to walk. 
By the stripes on Jesus' back, you are healed, and you only do what I say. I'm going to repeat that. Foot, you walk where I tell you to walk. You only do what I tell you to do. By the stripes on Jesus' back, you are healed. Okay? So this is a continual confession that you're going to have to continue to make over and over and over until it changes. So I want you to do that. And I want you to check back in with me um, and let me know over the course of the next few days what happens, okay? Okay. Um, now let's go up here to Patricia. And let's see here. So... Uh, Patricia says, uh, want it, basically wanting a restored voice, clear, beautiful, again, a disorder called spasmodic dysphonia, used to be a gospel singer and a pre, and, and a, a gospel singer and a speaker. Okay, so obviously, if you were a gospel singer, and now this is messing with your voice, is, is definitely an attack of the enemy one second all right so we're going to um we're going or i want to make sure are you there patricia we're going to go ahead and execute the believer's authority are you there Patricia, are you there? Okay. I'm not sure if Patricia is there or not, but we're going to go ahead and execute the believer's authority on her behalf. The kingdom of God has come. Okay, she's there. Hallelujah to Jesus. Just go ahead and receive and thank God um, and everyone else. If you're believing for healing, just receive your healing right now as we um, execute the believer's authority for Patricia. The kingdom of God has come near to Patricia in the name of Jesus. We take the name of Jesus and break the power of Satan over Patricia. Satan, take your hands off of her. Take your hands off of her throat, her vocal cords. We bind and rebuke um, a harassing spirit, a, a spirit of containment, a, a, a mute spirit. We bind and rebuke you in the name of Jesus. All evil spirits, we command you to cease your operations, to stop your maneuvers against her. We receive the abundant life of Jesus Christ into her body and into uh, specifically uh, that the virtue of Jesus Christ specifically into those vocal cords. We call those vocal cords strong in the Lord and in the power of his might loud. Uh, she shouts with the voice of Zion in the name of Jesus. She speaks clearly. Hallelujah to Jesus, and her voice is beautiful. We bind and rebuke spasmodic dysphonia. You stop your operations and you cease your maneuvers. We command spasmodic dysphonia to die at the root, never to return. Everything that is being um, that is causing this, we command it to be repaired and restored. We, com we command in the name of Jesus the uh, life of God to spring forth in the vocal cords in the name of Jesus. And we say that Patricia's uh, body, her vocal cords must line up to the perfect creation of God the Father in the garden of Eden, according to the word of God, and because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we say she is healed, cleansed, made whole, 
set free and delivered. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, uh, Patricia, go ahead and um, and speak. Say something. See how um, see how we're doing. I need specifics. Is it is it worse? Is it the same? Is it better? We have more sound. We got less sound. Old rounder. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you, my friend. Patricia, I need I need the report. I need the report. Are you there, Patricia? Patricia was there earlier. Are you there now? All right, I'm not getting any report from Patricia. Let us know uh, if you watched this replay. Let us know in the comments um, where we're at and just continue to thank God. So we continue to thank God before the healing manifests. Okay, hold on. Patricia says, yes, amen, a little better. Well, I mean, it's up to you. Do you Are you happy with a little better or you want some more better? You, would you like, sometimes you have to um, go ahead and, and uh, execute it again. What do you want to do, Patricia? Are you, are you happy with the progress we made so far? Or do you want to keep, uh, keep at it? It's up to you. And then while, while we're waiting on her response... Uh, some people think that, oh, if, if, it, if I'm going to be healed, it's going to be immediate. We believe in uh, immediate healing. We want it to be immediate. But even Jesus, when he prayed for the man um, who could not see, Jesus himself, the master, the Lord, the king of kings, he had to pray twice. I'll give you the scripture there since most people are unaware of that. Um Give me one second. I'm looking it up. All right. That's uh, Mark 8, 24. Uh, Mark 8, 24. All right. Patricia wants us to uh, pray some more. Whew. In the name of Jesus, uh, every evil spirit that is uh, militating against Patricia's voice, every evil spirit that has caused the initial incident, that is trying to maintain a silence upon her. We bind you and rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We command you to leave and never return. We cover her vocal cords in the blood of Jesus. We receive right now completion of the healing work of Jesus Christ. We say that she is healed right now and that her voice is strengthened is strong, is powerful, and that she will give God praise better than before. Hallelujah. I just heard this. We will make her better than before. Now, that uh, that's not a scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, God makes everything uh, excellent in his time. But there was an old uh, TV show, I believe it was called The Six Million Dollar Man, and they said, what? We'll make him better than before. So right now, we thank you, Father God, that Patricia is going to be better than before. And we receive that healing now. We receive that virtue now. We receive that empowerment, that grace right now. Just keep receiving, thanking God. Thank you, Father God, for the grace. The grace is an empowerment to do more than she could naturally do in her natural ability. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that she speaks clearly. She speaks boldly. Hallelujah. Give us more boldness, more boldness. We thank you, Lord, that her voice is heard by the nations. 
Woo-wee. We thank you, Father God, that when she sings, the peace of God comes upon us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We count it done. We believe we receive according to uh, Mark 11, verse 20 through 26, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah. All right, all right, let's check it again. We had some improvement. Do we have a little more improvement, a lot more improvement, or are we at the same spot? Patricia? Let us know, Patricia. Let us know. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, B. Polanco, how are you over there at, uh, on Instagram? God bless you, God bless you. Um, Brother Brando uh, gave us an amazing Shiba Inu um, vision that he had that is on the channel. That video is actually on the channel. Praise God for that. All right. Uh, let's see here. Just checking. Anything else? We're about to wrap up in prayer, and then we'll pray for some of these other requests here. Thank you, everyone, for being there. Okay, I did not uh, get another report from Patricia. So I will say this, Patricia. Um continue to thank God in advance by the stripes. Oh, wow, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Better, even more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now, Patricia, now you've seen what works. All you have to do is do what I do. All right? Do what I just showed you. And it's not me. It's because it's in the Word. So just continue to do that. Continue to command that voice to be what? Strong, bold, clear, and beautiful. I need you also to continue, and if you haven't, you need to start at least an hour a day reading healing scriptures. There's scriptures about God healing the mute, and you can speak, so you're not mute. So this is even easier for God to heal you. And uh, that healing will continue to manifest more and more and more. Okay, and any time that Satan tries to counterattack, you tell him, uh, leave now in Jesus' name. I bind you and rebuke you. Leave now in Jesus' name. My voice is healed. I sing as the oracle of God. Can you say that? I sing as the oracles of God. All right, Patricia, can you do that for us? Can you do that for us? And I want you to continue to check back, update us on that. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. All right. I'm going to go ahead uh, and uh, get ready for prayer. If no one else has any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, if no one else has uh, any prayer requests, I know there's some other prayer requests here that weren't healing related. We will cover uh, all the prayer requests, those that were healing related. And uh, other prayer requests. Um, so it's a okay to pray for healing. All right, nothing wrong with that. But prayer is not the primary way that people receive healing today. Um, it's not the primary way. What is the primary way? All right, Psalm chapter one hundred and seven, verse twenty. He sent his word and healed them. The primary way people receive healing today is reading healing scriptures, reading the word of God. All right, the word of God transforms. That's Romans chapter 12. So when we pray, all right, our prayer for healing should not continuously, well, let me rephrase. My recommendation would be for it to be a prayer of thanksgiving. I thank you, Father God, that I'm healed. I thank you, Father God, that healing springs forth uh, in my body. I thank you, Father God, that I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord because he's already given you healing. So you have to stop seeing yourself as the sick trying to get healed. 
You must see and identify yourself as the healed that is fighting off sickness. Do you see that? See, we live in a generation where people um, are always, uh, they're always saying who they are. They're always identifying as whatever they feel like identifying at, at the moment. But when you tell them to identify as being healed, then they get upset. All this other stuff, no one, no one says anything, you know, the, the dominant society, the mainstream society, has no problem with anyone identifying with anything they want to. But if I say that I'm healed because of what, what Jesus has done, people look at me like I'm crazy. Ooh, all right, Joanna Wright, um, can you please pray for me to get a job speedily? All right, um, we will do that. I do encourage you to read... Uh, work an hour a day, uh, the seven step biblical prosperity action plan. It's in the uh, uh, it's a link in the description of this video. Um, it should be. Let me let me make sure. And what I'll do, I'll just I'll make sure I put it in the chat as well. People who work that plan get a job typically within twenty one to thirty seven days. All right, I'll put that there, but I will pray for you to get a job. Uh, I do want you all to know that prayer is good. I believe in praying. I pray all the time, all right, but I do more than just praying. Prayer, I uh, had a, have a video on the channel, passive praying is not enough. Passive prayers won't do, all right, so prayer is good. Prayer plus Bible reading is better. Ooh, I'll let you go ahead and watch that video uh, to get uh, some more teaching on that. So we believe in prayer, not against prayer, but most Christians, all they want to do is pray. And that's typically a 30-second prayer. And then they get mad if what they pray for for 30 seconds doesn't happen. All right. Uh, prayer is like breathing. You got to breathe. However, reading the Bible is like eating. So no matter how much breathing you do, if you decide you're not going to eat, no amount of praying, no amount of breathing will supersede eating. Do you see what I'm saying? You have to do both. We got to pray and read the word. And that's and what I mean by that is if you want to be successful, if you want to win at every battle, if you want Satan to be afraid of you instead of you being afraid of him, you are going to have to pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and you're going to have to hit Satan with it repeatedly until he learns his lesson. Okay? And the way you do that, the way you use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is declaring the word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, uh, Joanna says, thank you. I don't think, I'm not sure, have you uh, ever come to a live stream before, Joanna? I'm not sure if you have or not, but uh, we definitely do appreciate you joining us. Um, thank you so much. God bless you. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, let me, we will cover all the prayer requests that are in the chat. Uh, let me, I don't think, uh, let's see here. Let's see. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Whoo! Thank you, Father God, for this day. We thank you for this time together in your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are good and that you are God. We thank you that healing belongs to us. Healing is the children's bread. We are your children, and we receive your healing in every area, physically, uh, mentally, mentally. Uh, in every situation, Lord, I, oh, I know people don't like it, Father God, but I thank you for healing our pocketbook, our money. Hallelujah to Jesus. We thank you and praise you that the kingdom of God is here. Uh, there is no impossibility. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that we are not sick trying to get healed. We are healed fighting off sickness. We disallow, in the name of Jesus, sickness to rule and reign over us. Come on, somebody. I need you to say this. I disallow sickness 
from ruling and reigning over me in the name of Jesus. I disallow pain. I disallow my body from not doing what I told it to do. My body does what I tell it to do in the name of Jesus. My body serves me as I serve Christ. Come on, somebody. My body serves me as I serve Christ. I don't serve my body. I don't do what my body wants me to do. My body does what I tell it to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we thank you and praise you for your many blessings. We thank you. We ask you to bless Chat, Monk, Kathy. We thank you again, Father God, for B. Polanco. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and praise you right now for everyone uh, that's watching or will watch on YouTube. Everyone who's watching or will watch uh, on Rumble, bless them even the more. Bless those who are watching on Facebook, those on Twitter, also called X. Those uh, who will see this in other formats, we thank you that your healing um, is upon them. We thank you, Father God, that your strength is upon them. We thank you, hallelujah to Jesus. Scripture just came up, uh, ankle bones receive strength right now. Ankle bones receive strength. Anyone having a problem with uh, anything in the legs, receive your strength right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Father God. We bless your name. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Somebody said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Thank you, Father God. Lord, bless Gwendolyn even the more. Bless her in every area, uh, financially, physically, mentally, uh, familially, uh, in her uh, businesses. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lord, bless Patricia. We thank you, Lord, for the demonstration and the revealing of your word in the improvement of her voice, Father God. We thank you that her voice gets better and better and better and that she's empowered, emboldened uh, to sing as the oracles of God. There are oracles that are singing that are not of God. But we thank you, Lord, that she sings as an oracle of God. Thank you, Father God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree, and we're touching and agreeing in thanksgiving that diabetes too leaves Gwendolyn in the name of Jesus. We thank you that her pancreas is strong. The kidney is strong. Every system uh, necessary for the proper digestion of food is strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we thank you, Father God, that uh, her neurological system responds to her and that this her feet respond to her. Her feet walk as they're supposed to walk. And we bind and rebuke yet again any evil spirits, any demonic force, any idol, any altar, any accursed item that is militating, speaking against and attacking her her feet, and her neurological system in the name of Jesus. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We cover um, her in the blood of Jesus. We cover everyone who will listen to this in the future in the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that we're protected. Lord, we thank you for Ruth. Lord, bless her, bless her indeed. Enlarge her territory. Let your hand be upon her. Keep her from evil. And keep her uh, from doing evil. Keep her from harming others and keep others from harming her. Let her ways be the paths of peace. Somebody say, thank you, Father God, that my paths are the paths of peace. Let's go further. Lord, thank you that my paths are the paths of shalom, peace. Glory be Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we're thanking you for Sister Maria H. We are thanking you for what she does uh, for others. Uh, We thank you, Father God, 
um, for providing all her needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Lord, as she takes care of um, dozens of children, Father God, send the resources as only you can. We believe we receive right now uh, abundant supply of harvest for her so that she can provide for all of those children that are in need. We thank you for supplying, supplying, supplying her need. We thank you sir, for supplying everything that she needs, the finances. Uh, Lord, I just pray for a building and land and property that she owns, that the orphanage owns, so that there will not be a continual um, requirement to come up with the, the rent or a mortgage. We thank you, Lord, for landslide windfall money. Hallelujah uh, to her now in Jesus' mighty name. I hope that you're praying with me, people. I hope that you're praying with me. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness. We thank you for Old Rounder, Lord. Bless Old Rounder uh, in every area. Lord, he has been uh, faithful. Lord, so increase him even the more. Now, Lord, I don't know what... Uh, private requests he may have before you, Lord, but I ask you to grant it on his behalf. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we're praying for Joanna. She is believing you for a job. Now, Lord, I thank you for a $100,000 job. I thank you for it being remote work from home with a kind supervisor, hallelujah to Jesus, and a, a good and supportive team. I thank you that the job comes speedily. I thank you that multiple streams of income come to her right now from every direction. I thank you in the name of Jesus and Lord, I thank you uh, that and I thank you that she will tithe off the gross. In the name of Jesus. So you see, a lot of people, uh, they want the money, but they don't want to tithe. Oh, my goodness. They, they want the money, but they don't want to offer. They, they want money, but they don't want to partner with ministries. They want money, but they don't want to help the poor. So uh, the way that, that you get a job, and there's many ways to get a job, but the easiest way to get a job, is to make a pledge to vow a vow to God to tithe. Now, I sure hope you send your tithes here. All right, but the tithe is God. You can send it wherever you want to send it. All right, but you need to, the way that uh, I've done it in the past, and got jobs quickly, is I made a vow to God. Now, I want you all, before you make that vow, don't make a vow if you ain't going to keep a vow. It's better for you to stay right where you are financially than to vow to God that you're going to do something. Then when you get the money, don't do it. Because 99% of people don't do what they say they're going to do when they get the money. So think about it. Let's take a moment to think. For This is for everybody who needs a job. Just take a moment. Or, or, we're believing for a $100,000 job, everybody. Is that right? All right, so that would mean that you're probably going to be making it $2,000 a week. Now, do you see yourself sending $200 in for tithes every week? If you don't, this not for you. But if you do, if you do see yourself sending 10% off the gross, make that vow to God and watch the job show up. I'm going to give you a second to make your vow. If you don't want to make your vow, don't make it. All right, Lord, those that want, want that kind of money, those that want a job, they've made their vows. So we thank you now for sending the job to them. Thank you for the favor in the interview. I thank you just as the um, three Hebrew young men in Daniel chapter 1 that when they are interviewed, they are found better than all those who they are in competition. Everyone else, they are, they are found to be the best. 
We thank you for favor upon their resume, that their resume miraculously rises to the top. Their resume catches the attention of those who would make the decision that when people look upon them as they looked upon Esther, that they decided to do what's best for them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for jobs, jobs, and better jobs. I pray for those even now who have a job. We thank you for better jobs. Come on, somebody. Say thank you, Father God, for jobs, jobs, and better jobs. Come on, come on, come on. I thank you, Lord, for multiple streams of income. Lord, we thank you that the Garden of Eden had four streams of water. Lord, we know that most millionaires have seven streams of income. Lord, we thank you that you are setting us up for the million flow. Open the eyes of our understanding. I need you to say it. Open the eyes of my understanding and show me where the money resides. I know you haven't heard this. I know y'all haven't heard this. Lord, show me where the money resides. Do you know that, that God, he told Peter where the money was? Lord, tell us where the money is at. Ooh, Jesus. 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 Help us, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, Lord, Lord. We thank you for brother friends. Lord, bless friends in every area. We thank you for standing him up straight. We thank you for keeping him standing strong and tall. We thank you that healing is his in every way, in every shape, in every form. That your health rejuvenates, reinvigorates, restores, and repairs every system in his body. In the name of Jesus, glory, glory, glory be to God. Lord, we thank you for Val G. Lord, bless Val in every area. We thank you for more and more income coming in. We thank you that the rent is paid. Uh, I thank you for paying my rent. I thank you for paying everybody's rent. Lord, we're just asking you for so much money that we can pay our rent in advance. I know that you all think that that might be outlandish, but God's done it before for me where my rent was paid a year in advance. So I'm here to testify He'll do it. Lord, we're asking you, we believe we receive enough money to pay the rent in advance. And there's those who are believing for homes. Lord, your word says that uh, there are riches in our house. Ooh, riches uh, in our house. So we thank you for real estate. Hallelujah to Jesus. We thank you for wonderful things in the house. Some people believe in for furniture. Lord, give them the nicest furniture, the most comfortable furniture. Lord, the furniture, when they sit on it, they can get inspired to do work for you. Ooh, Lord, with some people are writers. Some people are editors. Some people are work in the creative field. We thank you for comfortable furniture so that we are able to create uh, just according to the creation that you created. You are the creator, and we are your children, so we little creators. Oh, my goodness, Lord, don't let nobody get mad at me for let, telling them that because we are your children, we have a creative ability. Whoo, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. There's someone who doesn't know how to do what they need to do. Lord, I pray just like in the book of Exodus that you download, that you give the wisdom to do the work that we don't know how to do. Show us how to fix the problem. Show us how to go about and solving issues. And we thank you. Oh, glory be to God. We thank you that there's, I may not know, I may not know how to do it, but there's nothing that you don't know how to do. Lord, we receive all your wisdom right now, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are praying, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
We bind and rebuke uh, pain in the arms, pain in the shoulders. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind and rebuke all dizziness. Lord, dizziness is easy. Lord, tell people what they need to be um, eating as far as the electrolytes, the uh, right food so that they're not dizzy. We bind and rebuke this spirit of dizziness. Uh, there's been so many reports recently of people who have been dizzy. We bind and rebuke the dizziness, and we ask you, Lord, to give them wisdom on what foods they need to be eating to restore the proper and correct electrolytes. In Jesus' mighty name, glory, glory, glory be to God. Woo! We thank you for uh, Old Rounder, bro. He says, I am Andrew. Uh, and he's asking you, Father God, for leading him and guiding him on this next move. Lord, we thank you for favor on the move. Hallelujah to Jesus. We thank you for favor in the move. And we thank you for favor after the move. We thank you for protection and your provision in the process of the move, in Jesus, in Jesus, mighty, mighty name. Glory, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We pray, Lord, right now for Robert uh, D. Lord, bless Robert D. In the mighty name of Jesus, give Robert what he needs to move forward to go to the next level, to move higher in you, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying, Lord, bless Robert's uh, investments. Lord, uh, many of us have been invested in XRP for a very, 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 very long time. Lord, strengthen our resolve. Lord, give us visions. Give us dreams. Reassure us. And provide all of our needs. Provide our desires and our wants so that there won't be any necessity for us to sell the XRP. We thank you and praise you for giving us uh, what we need as far as informationally, what we need as far as financially, what we need as far as emotionally and mentally. Lord, hallelujah to Jesus, don't let us play ourselves. Oh, my Lord. Lord, don't let us cause us to miss out. Lord, don't let us sabotage our own self. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're praying. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift you up. We say that there is none like you. No one else can do what you can do. Oh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Lord, bless Aunt Eve. Bless Aunt Eve even the more. Lord, we thank you and praise you for more. This is the time for more of your goodness more of your wisdom, more of your favor, and yes, 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 joy, joy for the journey. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying we take the name of Jesus and we break the power of Satan over all our friends and family. Satan, take your hands off of them. Father God, open the eyes of their understanding so that they may see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, send workers and laborers to lead them to salvation through Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for everyone right now who is near death, those who know it and those who don't know it, those who are in the mental institution, 
those who are in the psychiatric ward, those who are in the hospital, even those who are in the hospice. Lord, we're asking you for a hospice miracle on today. Lord, we're asking you to extend the life of everyone who is near death at this moment, especially those who are not yet ready to enter into eternity. Uh, those, Father God, who have called upon the name of Jesus, but may not be ready for their judgment. Those who have rejected Jesus and do not have salvation in them. Lord, have mercy on their souls. Send workers and laborers to lead them to salvation or lead them into repentance, discipleship, so that they might be in right standing with you. Lord, we pray this prayer so that a soul might be saved from the gates of hell, so that hundreds, thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands, and if it be permissible, kind sir, that because of this prayer, because that we are all joined together, that millions of souls might be saved from the gates of hell. Now we bind, forbid, rebuke, and disallow the decision from being made by everyone we know, everyone we know of, everyone who knows us, everyone who knows of us. We bind, forbid, rebuke, and disallow the decision from being made to go to hell Lord, there are some who say that they want to go to hell. Father God, oh Lord, 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 they cannot be well. They can't be right upstairs, Father God. Have mercy. Have mercy. We ask you to send workers and laborers to everyone that we've ever come in contact with, Father God, so that they may make a decision for Jesus and so that they will be forever connected with us in heaven for eternity, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we pray for others. We also pray for ourselves. Lord, lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. Lord, we thank you that the new jobs belong to us, the businesses, the streams of income, the healing, the perfect health, the fitness, the vitality, the long life, the joy. We thank you that it is ours right now. But most importantly, we thank you that salvation, being the, the entrance into heaven, belongs to us, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to tell us anything that we need to stop doing, anything that we must start doing. Lord, we say now we forgive everybody for everything they ever did to us. Come on, somebody. I need you to say it like you mean it. I forgive everybody for everything. They ever did to me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father God. We're not going to hell, period. And we're definitely not going to hell for unforgiveness. So, Lord, after we live 120 years, minimum of good health, good wealth. After we complete our prophetic destiny upon earth. We thank you and we praise you, Father God, that there will not be any arguments, any disputes between the angels and the demons on uh, which kingdom do we belong in. Uh, should we go up or should we go down? We thank you, Father God, that your angels will escort us expeditiously to the gates of heaven. And we thank you, Father God, at our judgment that it won't be a long proceeding. Lord, 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 we thank you, Father God, that you will not have to go get the book of our life, what we were supposed to do. You will not have to, and of course, we know you wouldn't get it. I mean, you wouldn't have to tell the angels to go get it, Lord. You won't, won't have to tell the angels on the other side to go get the book of our life. Or what we actually did do lord we know that you we we don't want you lord we're, we're believing we're asking you we're thanking you in advance that you won't have to compare between the two 
Lord, we, as the scripture we read said today, we thank you that our names are written in heaven. We thank you that our names is in the Lamb's book of life and you won't have to get a magnifying glass and see whether or not our name was etched out. Ooh, we thank you, Lord, that our name will be there in bold print. Lord, we thank you that you won't have to show everybody on the big Jumbotron TV what we actually did do. And the times that we should have done things that we refused to do. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, we thank you for leading us and guiding us. And we thank you that you won't say, what? is all that unforgiveness doing in there. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we will not intentionally, on purpose, live a life full of sin and think that after years and decades and scores and lifetime, uh, lifetime of intentionally doing wrong, we're going to get to heaven and say, Lord, do you uh, have any of that mercy left? Lord, we thank you and praise you that you won't say to us, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you won't say, you know what? You don't get a well done. You get a just barely. Oh, Lord, how embarrassing. How embarrassing it would be. No, no, no. We thank you, Father God, that we will hear you say, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And Father God, just as the penalties of hell are eternal, we thank you that the rewards of heaven are also eternal. Now, Lord, it's better than the alternative, but we don't want only just a slip of salvation. Just a garment to cover us so that we are presentable in heaven. No, no, no. In addition to the slip of salvation, we want the robe of righteousness. So, Father God, we ask you to help us to walk worthy. Ah, Lord, help us walk worthy of the name of Jesus Christ. And... When we receive our crown, we will find Jesus and we will lay prostrate at his feet and place our crown at his feet and say, hallelujah, hallelujah, salvation and glory. Thank you, Jesus. I made it over. Oh, I made it over. And we thank you. And we praise you. We glorify you. Woo, we lift you up. We say there's none like you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah, we are praying. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. Woo, praise God. Praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? Did I miss anybody in prayer? I believe I prayed for everyone. Uh, let's see here. Uh, United through Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Over on um, over on Instagram uh, says, please pray for Walt, a pastor who is in AFib. Uh, we bind and rebuke in the name of Jesus, uh, AFib, which is the heart beating uh, incorrectly. We bind and rebuke that um, condition, that occurrence, any evil spirits, the spirit of infirmity, leave him now. 
We receive into his body the abundant life of Jesus Christ. We receive into his heart that left ventricle and that right ventricle, the virtue of Jesus Christ. Right now we cover his heart, his blood vessels with the blood of Jesus. We command his body to line up to the perfect original creation of God the Father in the Garden of Eden. Woo, we say by the stripes on Jesus' back, Walt is healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father God, send um, information, knowledge uh, to Walt, to his family, uh, so that, Father God, he starts eating his tomatoes, his watermelon. He gets a multivitamin. He gets the magnesium uh, that the heart requires. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm just checking to make sure here before we go into the benediction. Make sure there's no other messages. Woo, thank you, Lord. Walt will live and not die. And declare the work of the Lord. Walt will live and not die. And declare the work of the Lord. I thank you, Father God, that Walt will live. And not die and declare the works of the Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Glory, glory. All right. I don't see any other questions. Uh, I'm going to uh, pronounce a benediction over you. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. May the Lord keep you. May he keep you from the devil and may he keep you from you. May he keep you from the enemy on the outside and the enemy on the inside. Lord, keep me from me. Ooh, Jesus, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. Somebody I wish you would say, Jesus, keep me from me. What I want to do. See, this body agenda, this flesh, it got stuff it want to do. But I've got to put it under subjection every day. Oh, my goodness. Every day. Lord, may your face shine upon me. I thank you for your wisdom, Father God. I thank you for your wisdom. Whoo! Thank you for your knowledge. I don't know it all. But I know somebody who do know it all. <laughs> I say I don't know it all. I don't know it all. But I thank God, oh, that he does know it all. I thank you, Lord, for being gracious to me. Thank you for more grace, more empowerment, more blessing. Ooh, more ability to do what I couldn't do in my own natural ability. More ability to do what I couldn't do in my own natural mental ability. More grace. I wish somebody would say more grace. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for uh, Prophet Brian Corn popularized that phrase, more grace. I need more grace. Lord, please, Ooh, place your countenance upon me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The countenance tells you what's going on in the emotional state. I thank you, Lord, that my emotions are subjected to the fruit of the Spirit. If it's not the fruit of the Spirit, it's not me. I don't, I don't allow any emotions or feelings other than those compatible with the fruit of the Spirit. And that countenance as well, uh, if, if you don't like your face, you should love your face, but if you don't like your face, there are scriptures, including this one, that God will beautify you. Lord, beautify me. Woo-wee. All right. Hallelujah. And the, the, the beautification we need is the beautification of our behavior. Oh, Jesus, help me. Lord, beautify my behavior. Oh, my gosh. Woo, Jesus. When the Lord look at our behavior, does he, does he like the way it look? Or he don't like the way our behavior look. Oh, my. Woo, thank you, Lord, for giving me your peace. 
Hallelujah. That's that shalom piece that fixes everything that would attempt to take my peace, that would attempt to steal the peace of God, that would attempt to disturb my peace of mind. Thank you, Father God, for the shalom peace of God. Woo, in Jesus' mighty name. All right, love y'all in Christ. Uh, if you've watched all the way to the end, go ahead and put a shield. Put a shield in the comment section. Put a shield in the comment section. All right, love y'all in Christ. God bless you with every blessing. In Jesus' mighty name.